groups and sections similar yet different. Groups and sections look and act the same in many ways but are different. Groups are manually created. You'll go to Site Info and Manage Groups. And the important thing here is that uh, individuals can be in multiple groups at once. And so I may be in three different groups, you may be in two. With sections, however, they tend to be automatically created by the registrar. And just as with course sections, you don't want students in multiple sections. Students should be in one section only and then not available in the others. And so there are lots of group aware tools in Sakai. Sakai doesn't care whether it's a group or a section. The behavior is the same. And so when you're deploying announcements or resources to different groups, you'll always do the same thing. Let's see how. Okay, in my example, I want to take a bunch of onions and add them to my site. My site is unpublished, and so these are going to be my students. I go to Site Info, and I want to create groups, but I'm not at a point to do that because the first thing I have to do is have participants in my site. So I'm going to add them one onion per line. I just paste it in from that spreadsheet, click Continue. I need to give everybody a role. And then I have to make sure to continue and to finish and go through all the steps, otherwise it won't stick. So we come down here and finish. Great, so now my site is populated with a bunch of students. I'm going to go create a new group. And um, this is going to be the dinosaur loving group, the T-Rex group. Alrighty. And you can give them a description that will show up for you as the instructor role. And then I just start assigning people by moving them over. So I can click and move over. All right. And we'll finish this up. I can multiple click holding down a command or control, depending on your operating system. Add them, and there's my little group, T Rex. All right, so let's create another group. This group will love birds. All right, so now I have all of my students again. And June was in the first group, but I'm also going to put her in the second group. And so that's one key concept that um, when you're creating groups like this, people can be in multiple groups. Great, OK. The next thing we're going to do is deploy an announcement to one of those groups. So we go in as we always would, add our announcement. Then we come down, and here's the important part, access, display to selected groups. We're going to display it just to the bird group. I'm not going to give notification, and I'm going to add that announcement. And there's my bird watching trip, and you can see that it's released to the birds group. All right, great. We got groups. Creating groups is from site info, manage groups. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at sections. So we need to go to Edit Tools, and we're going to add the Section Info tool. Continue and finish. Now sections, as we talked about before, is a little different. Let's, let's look at options. For the vast majority of people, these sections are going to be automatically managed by the registrar. However, for this example, I want to show you manually managing sections. Now, I want to create sections where uh, students cannot be in the same section. So I want this to be exclusive to the group of students that I put in. I'm going to make three groups of discussion just to show you how it goes. I'm going to limit these to four um, people each. And so we'll go fill out that form. And there are more advanced things that can be done with sections. This is just to give you a brief overview. Those who want to learn more definitely can. I would say Aurora and Rob Moore are our resident experts. So we're going to assign some students. Let's pick the A's. There they go. We got four out of four in there. And we're going to assign those students. And we'll just go through to the second group. We'll add the B's. 
And you'll notice the A's didn't even show up. I couldn't even select the A's because they'd already been removed from the pool, basically. And now the B's are gone, so we're going to go to the C's. Now my limit is set at 4, but I'm moving 5 over, as I can see right there. And so if you go over the limit, you'll get this warning. You're 1 over the max limit. So you can either leave that or I'll fix it. Okay, so now we have our sections. One of the key things about sections is that they can be TA-led. So let's assign some TAs now. I'm going to take my students and we're going to make three of them TAs. So we'll make Bob and Emily and Vicki. Great, they're TAs I have to remember to update. And now I'm going to go back to sections so that I can assign a TA to each section. And so there goes Bob. And I'm in discussion section two. Notice all of the TAs show up all the time because TAs can uh, be TA for multiple sections. Whereas the students it's have to be in a particular section. Great, so our TAs have been assigned and there they are. And this is what we're doing for this course site, T3. All right, so now what you can do is you can create folders that are restricted to particular groups or sections. So we'll do this to the section one. We'll create a folder for section one. Note that it is not one of the manually created groups that we did. It's different. So we're going to display to selected groups, but look, both groups and sections show up. The behavior in Sakai is the same, regardless of whether you're using groups or sections. And so now, when people from Section 1 log in, they will see that folder, but the other students in the other sections will not see it. You can do the same thing for, we're going to do the, the bird group. So in theory, a person can be in both a section and a group simultaneously. Can you imagine why you would want to do that? Perhaps within your section, if you have multiple sections in a course, you want to create student groups for projects. That might be one example. So let's just deploy a calendar event now. And you get the idea. Whenever you go to a tool that is group aware in Sakai, once you start to add your event, whenever you see display to selected groups, you have the option to pick which group or section will see the event or receive the information. And there we have a little description and display to selected groups once again. And so I'm displaying to multiple. So there's a lot of flexibility. And we got an assignment and I'm going to save it. And there you go. So you have your own new group website. Feel free to break it. If you need more sites, just let us know. Thanks very much.